so I've been building a lot of PCs in, uh, in the recent times here, the last two or three months. I've built like seven and uh, want to show you some tips and tricks of what I've been doing to um, find the best price on your GPUs. Now, I already have two graphics cards that I use that I'm, that I'm looking at every single time if I go to build a used PC. Uh, all the testing I've done, these two are, I think, the best performance bang for your buck. I don't think that these two can be beaten in price effectiveness unless you find like a freak post. So then if you want to run like the tightest budget, the GTX 980 is it's almost impossible to beat for that. Again, unless you find a random freak post. But the 980 runs a lot of AAA titles in high settings, runs Black Myth Kong on lower settings, and runs high FPS performance modes for esports or high settings uh, uh, for esports. Um, why? Uh, so, again, what what I've bought recently, although the market does fluctuate, is that right around here, like forty five dollars. Now I've gotten multiple uh, GTX 980s. Right at forty five dollars, I think, including shipping or whatnot. But again, like the market does fluctuate. So the one thing I will have to say is you have to do do have to be careful on some of these posts uh, for the parts only or whatnot. It seems like it seems like the nine eighty has gone down a little bit, while the ten eighty has gone up. And I also recently bought one of these. I think uh, this is this is listed at sixty dollars right now. I bought mine for $42 shipped. Although I like it. It's a very nice looking card. And because it's silver all the way around the Zotac card, it um it blends in really well with a white PC build. So that's a really great card to pick up. Um you, the blower styles are I know the ones that like people like to avoid, but they work well. And as long as you have a proper cooling setup in your PC, there's no issue and they're not very loud. They're not as loud as you would initially think you are, or think they would be. So what I like to do, the key for eBay posting, or is not just to go on here and find the cheapest one right away and buy it. But what I like to do is um, just watch a bunch of posts, uh, make offers on the posts that you can. A lot of times uh, you'll get, you know, you can go back. Some people are more stubborn. You have to go back and forth before you finally get a settle on a price. Some people will take your price, uh, your price offer right away. Um, also, I noticed that eBay will start sending you offers. A lot of times, sellers will start sending you offers, even if you don't track the post, even if you just view it. People will wind up sending you offers. So, what I like to do is go through, find like five or six posts that are within the price range that I want to spend, and just uh, watch them. Uh, sometimes I don't even make a bother uh, bother making a, an offer because it kind of shows a little bit of indifference when you're when you're just uh, paying attention, and then uh, just take the offer when you get it. Or make a counter offer, and a lot of times you'll get uh, get it in a decent price. So the 980s, why this is the reason right here is the reason why they're like my go-to uh, because you can get them like fifty dollars or less, and they run high settings on most games. Right now, if you want to squeeze out the most performance-wise, if you want to squeeze out the most performance, then oh, wrong one. There we go. Back to the 1080 we started on. Now I bought my first 1080. I only paid eighty dollars for it. The blower style, the Dell. Which again doesn't really have any problems with playing loud. Uh, playing loud, it was playing cool, completely fine, quiet. It didn't have any cooling issues. Um, now, let's see. This, now, this is here's another thing too that you got to watch out for. A lot, a lot of these ones that are lower, lower uh, dollar items are a little bit deceptive because they're bid only and their buyout now will be really high. But um, right now, the, the the listing prices for the 1080s have gone up to over a hundred dollars. Um, so it is, you know, this is, again, I still think it's, it's, it's fair ish. Uh, me personally, I would not pay over $95 for one of these cars. Just a principle of the fact, because once you start paying more than that, you're starting to get into the price range of a, of a modern mid range card, which you can buy brand new for not a crazy amount more. Okay. So right here, like, $110 plus $10 shipping, right? $120 you'd be paying for this. You could still buy like a brand range, a brand new mid range card for not that much more for what, the, what they're asking for here. So I wouldn't do that. But, um, again, same model. You go through, make the offers where you can and, and watch a whole bunch of them. Eventually, it, like, especially if you're not doing this to try and flip PCs or try and resell. If you're doing this because you're trying to make something for yourself, 
this isn't really that you know that difficult as long as you're not in a rush. All you got to do is make one score. Where if you're if you're selling PCs, you got to do this multiple times, which can be a bit of a pain in the ass because that means that your overhead is going to change, you know, uh, depending on what how how what the price is for the GPU. Which is why I like to try and build as much new parts as possible, so that way you know how much your profit margin is going to be. So. If you can get it down to where the only thing that you're paying for that fluctuates is the GPU, then that's good. At least you can get a good baseline range of where you're going to be selling your, or how much it's going to cost you to build a computer to sell. Um, now, the last thing I want to talk about for the, these used these used ones is that um, I do like to keep an eye out on the newer cards, just because of the fact that you might might pass up, uh, might miss a deal that could be just as cost effective as the older ones and the cars it's a much newer card now the 1080 i think if you benchmark it still rates higher than the 6600 um but again you're looking at like a brand new card that's going to have much longer support versus something that's pretty old so um yeah so uh, again 157 dollars but her best offer so you got a little bit of negotiation price so when you stack up that 150 dollars versus 110 plus uh you know or 157 versus 120, you know, you're looking at almost um, something that's very new versus something that's very old. So I know that there's a lot of people that would avoid buying cards like that just because of the fact of how old they are, or maybe just because of aesthetics, uh, you know, or the style. You know, a lot of people don't like blower style. A lot of people don't like the little bricky look to it. So it's kind of hard just, you know, when you can see cards that have, um, you know, that look this good for these prices. Uh, I guess, and then the last one I want to talk about is Micro Center. Now, I'm not, I know Micro Center only has like 25, 25 stores nationwide or something like that. And, uh, we only recently got a, a Micro Center. Yeah, I'm living in South Florida. It's about a 30 mile drive for me. I can make it in about a half an hour. Uh, so I go down there pretty frequently. Now, initially, I, I went down there just for the novelty of seeing it, like Toys R Us for game, uh, for PC parts. And, but when I started browsing around looking at them, like these parts are just, unrealistic for the market i'm trying to crack into i want to crack into like the 400 dollar mark or the 400 dollar range for pcs to sell 400 dollars to 500 dollars it's kind of hard to build a pc uh using parts from micro center and be able to sell at that range as a matter of fact the lowest dollar pc i was able to build using all micro center was around 470 dollars and I, and i still have that computer because for me to sell it I have to mark it up a decent amount. And, you know, we're in the $500 range for me to make any profit on it. And honestly, I can build uh, a computer with a 980 or a 1080 that performs just as well, or if not better, in some cases with the 1080 um, that I built the um, the Micro Center only PC with. So, so right out the gate, I was like, well, that was a cool, fun little experiment. I got to test out a um, the new Intel card, um, but. I, you know, again, I don't think it's, you know, that for me to sell PCs, it makes sense for me to buy a micro center. But then I, you know, case wise, I started paying attention to one thing. Uh, one of my favorite cases sells on micro center. One of my favorite go-to cases right now. Uh, let me pull it up real quick. Yeah, PC parts. Oh, I did hit the Dropbox. Anyway, this year. PC cases. All computer cases, we go to, what am, I, am I not clicking here, or am I lagging? Sorry about that, guys. It was kind of an impromptu thing. Didn't realize it would be that slow. But this is how I started doing this, right? I started camping in the open boxes. And, oh, okay, there is no, that's why it's not there. Because none of there's no open box for it right now. But uh, this this right here, this Inland X1, uh, it's like a Montec collaboration with Micro Center. Uh, $49.99. I think it's the best bang for your buck. It comes with four PCs. They're, RG, they're RGB. Now, they do get stuck at that, that rainbow-looking color. And for me, that's a little frustrating. But they are, fortunately, they're on the cooler side of the color range for the rainbow. So it doesn't look bad. Now, the only thing I want to uh, gripe about is that the window, it, the glass is tinted. But fortunately, the color scheme with the tinted glass and an all black build actually adds to it. I think it looks pretty good. So I would just camp the open box and wait for these to come out open box. And they're, um, they were, you know, $39 open box. So $39. With fans, with four fans, is kind of hard to find for a case. I think it's a very good looking case for that. But anyway, to go back to the graphics cards here, 
and to wrap up this video. Um, I think so if you just camp out in the open box section for graphics cards, this is where you're going to grab your, uh, your great deals. Uh, the RX 580, uh, poo on that card. I think that card's nonsense, a waste of time. There's no point in buying that card. The 980 completely outshines that card. You can buy a 980 for 40, 50 dollars all day. Um, so here, right here, for example, right, the A750, $151. I think this card normally goes for, like, uh, oh, there you go, right there, $189.99. So $190 something, almost $200 with tax. Uh, I know that people like to poo on the Intel cards. I have one, uh, I have an A580. While I do agree that the A580 for performance to dollar wise, I don't think it's quite there yet. Although, when I tested Black Myth Wukong versus some of the older cards, I think that's where the uh, the A580 really shines. Like, it's kind of hit or miss. It's not super consistent. But at $151 and already having some Intel experience, I have no issues with buying this card again. And I would definitely get that card. As a matter of fact, recently I bought some stuff and I had to make a decision whether I wanted to buy this one or not. Um... But I, I wound up skipping out on it because I couldn't justify buying it versus the cards I already had in my side supply. But if you go here, look at this right here. The $271 for RX 7600 XT. Uh, I recently bought a 7700 XT from uh, for them also with an open box. It, the open box was like $297 uh, versus the $356 that normally retails at. And the 7700 XT outperforms the 4060. So I bought a card that's like 40% better than the than the 4060 at the 4060 price. Um, and they recently had a white 6600 on here uh, that was 150, $158, but I guess that's sold. So um, yeah, so if you do live close to a micro center and if you're buying car uh, buying parts frequently, I would definitely say camp out on their open box selection because a lot of their open box values are very good. Um, and which has caused me to spend a, you know, a very decent amount of money at a micro in a very short amount of time. All right, guys. So, uh, hope you got something out of that. Uh, if you, I mean, leave a comment if you did. If you want to ask something, I am watching all my comments on a regular. Um, if you want to talk to me directly, I don't have a Discord or anything like that set up right now, but I do have in the description below, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Instagram is the easiest if you want to talk to me because you can do the voice chat a lot easier. Oh, I think Facebook has it as well. So if you want to, if you want to do voice chat, I can do that. Uh, right now is a good time to go because the channel is really small. So the less traffic we have right now, the easier it is to get a hold of me. As the channel grows, we have more people message on a regular. It's going to be a little hard to get through. All right, guys, thanks for watching and uh, peace.